ladies and gents, welcome back to Power Nostalgia. This video we are looking at a sort of um, a sort of uh, unfor unforgettable legend, I would say. So, like an unknown hero, un unknown legend, with an iconic theme tune that they keep referencing on the radio now and again. It's using adverts as well. I'm talking about Captain Pugwash. Um, let's begin. So, Captain Pugwash. Uh, quite interesting backstory with him. Um, Created by a guy called John Ryan, he first appeared in Eagle Comics, wouldn't you believe, in 1950. And since then, I think by the late mid mid late May, no mid late 60s, he had a black and white show of his own, involving was it like uh, was it cardboard puppets and sticks actually, which is quite interesting. And then he then then we did this movement to the mid 70s actually. Uh, that's just. That's the backstory over with, so let's begin. So, 1974, we got Captain Pugwash, or the adventures of Captain Pugwash done by the BBC in 1974, and they were done by a guy called Peter Hawkins. Peter Hawkins, one of the original voices of the Daleks from the 60s, I don't know, he might have been been on since, was the Eve of the Daleks from 1967? And then he did it over stuff as well, he did the Asterix films, I think he did, what's, it, what's that one? Asterix and The Big Fight, that's it. Because he... I forgot what your voice now, but he was in it. And he's been doing a few other things as well. And then he did the voice of Captain Pugwash in the mid-70s. And it's quite good, actually. I mean, the, the, damage, the style of it, well, it's puppets, actually. But you put the move up and down. It's like, they like those, mar oh, what are they called? Like, I forgot what they're called now, but they're like pins. They're, like, they're not marionettes, I know that. They're just a weird puppet you stick with pins and they have like loose limbs. So I think that's our style they do. And it sort of works. I mean, Hawkins's voice work is pretty good, actually. And it just basically works. Uh, you know, it's quite funny. It's loud and obnoxious. Like, eh. So the ship. So the ship. I think something like that, really. If I, I'm doing it, but that's not it. Something like that. I don't know. And I've, I've completely lost words now. But... It's like that, and he, and he sort of does it okay. I mean, don't expect to put, like, a rig modulator on his voice. <laughs> no, that'd be terrible. I think Captain Pogwash in space. No, that's not, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. Yeah, so that, ran, that did for about a year, about 75, about 75. I think, I don't know how many they did, but it was quite good. It was quite, it's memorable now, actually, because people look back on it and think, they think of the original 70s series, actually, which, which is okay. And then we come on to the late nineties, actually, for about was it ninety seven, and we get to then the rights of Captain Pogwash got given to the rights. Well, the right no, the rights to Captain Pogwash were given, were bought by a woman who by the name of Allcraft, and then and then the late nineties, this animated show pops on our screen, and we get this character who. And she's been around for a long time, since, since the early 50s. He comes back and gives a good impression of what the 90s are. And surprisingly, he basically came... He basically, this series all finished at the end of the 90s, actually. I think it ran for about two seasons, maybe for a season. Well, I think it actually ran for a season. It's, and we come to this sort of weird um, sort of era of which, you know, there were some reboots that have stopped doing the rounds again, of course. Um, one vid, one one spring to mind is James the Cat, which actually was was the same person who actually bought was actually the same the same person who brought the rights as well, actually, and they were under published under this this company called Gullion, or Gu, Gullion, I think yeah Gullion uh, Entertainment of course, which is owned by owned by Hit Entertainment of course, and so on and so forth. This is how companies work, you know. And then so these two are. Uh, were bought and they were they had a one-off series in the late nineties actually to see how it goes. Unlike James the Cat, which is a bit far different because he became the he came like a VP and he traveled he, he became a diplomat actually, which is quite funny. Captain Pogba is still the same is still the same. Uh, bumbling clumsy pirate that we've gone gone to love in his high voice, which is done by a guy called James Saxon now who sadly passed away in two thousand and three. Quite surprising. It was only forty nine when he died. My God, and. His sort of intuition of Pogwash is quite different, I would say. Um, you still got the high pitched voice, but it's some, there's something else quite different from what Saxon brings. Um, I think it's a little bit more deeper than Peter Hawkins, I would think. And 
it's just pretty good. I always find this version of Captain Paul Wash more memorable, in my opinion, because along with James the Carter, along with said of a character, which I'll mention about, I keep foreshadowing lots of stuff, lots of stuff, I'm getting there, it will come eventually. We get to at this point, in the 90s, especially from 94, we start getting reboots of infamous TV shows from the 70s and 80s, which would get a brand new list of life only for one season and then to be disappeared shortly afterwards. And I always find three of them interesting. You know, the three, the three almost James the Cat and Captain Pogosh interesting because obviously it's, it's something I was quite aware of through a DVD which I've seen all the way back in 2001 and which is just this is like an inner sleeve that sort of intrigued me and think what the hell are these characters and I sort of looked into these and thought okay Captain Bogwash especially because I've heard some one thing to mention about the characters of Captain Bogwash is that um, I think it was one of the newspapers I think the Daily Mail or something or Daily Star I think reported that they were quite sexual slurs, something like Roger the Cabin Boy, there was, um, I think it was the, uh, the, the one, you know, they're sort of like, se- like terms for, for sex, really. And I was quite surprised about that, actually. I think this is dated back for the t- early 2000s, actually. And it was quite shocking, actually. Like, okay. And they did show the definitions at the bottom, very much like a what the, you know, these characters, of course, you know, it's just everything like that. But... Overall, I think for a positive version of Captain Pop, which people always say the 70s version is better, to me, I always think of the 90s version iteration of Captain Pop, which, as my or my sort of introduction to him. I've I just saw you know the the sometimes Child Four, Child Five he used to do like these top things like a hundred greatest kids TV shows and this sort of thing. Captain Pop, which I was always been there. At some point, you know, and they always show, they always show the 70s version, which always quite surprised me. I think, when I first watched that, I thought, oh my god, look at it. It's quite loose, they're a bit rigid, and look at the puppetry. Look at, oh my god, oh my god. And it's like, in my head, not surprised, like, oh my god, like out front, look at, like, screaming the TV. I'm not that sort of person who does it anyway. But it's just, when I first looked at it, I thought, wow. And considering for, for an animated, considering it's for the late nineties, so obviously I was born in the late nineties. Surprisingly, this is quite a surprise for a lot. Maybe to people who think, "Oh, I thought you, you thought you were thirties then." No. <laughs> yeah. So let me. Yeah. So for being a late nineties kid, I was thinking the the version of Captain Pugwash is better. I didn't own anything VHS related of Captain Pugwash at all. I did see. All those kiddie rides, they, just, they still have one somewhere, actually, in some of the place, nearby places in, around the Lake Street. I'm pretty sure there's a Captain Pug Bush ride still in front of a supermarket in Baron Furnace, if I can remember, and I think it's still there. It's just gathering up dust and being wet all the time, you know, along with a few others. If it's still there, I don't know. I'll the got rid of it. Ah, uh, the brilliance changing these days. Shame. Anyway, thanks for watching. I've been talking about Captain Pogwash, the original venture, the adventures of Captain Pogwash, original version, and the '90s reboot. But sorry for the blathering. It's just, it's quite, it's extraordinary. But it's some, it's something I've never really grew up on. Pogwash never really. Only that theme. It's just that theme here that keeps popping up. You think peop, that theme associates with Captain Pogwash? You know the. Well, I can't. I'm not going to do impersonation of it at all, but. It's still hanging around. It's like it's like a bad smell. Well, not really. It's not. It's quite good. It's joyful. It's very joyful. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you for the next video.